Joining me now, Susan Rice, former director of the Domestic Policy Council for the Biden administration, former national security advisor and former U.N. ambassador in the Obama administration. Ambassador Rice, welcome back to The Sunday Show. Great to be with you, Jonathan. So on the specific concern about Trump potentially being indebted to a foreign entity, how concerned should we be about that? Well, I think it is a real concern. We obviously have to wait and see. Uh, how his financial situation plays out. But should it come to a point where he is uh, required to take money from uh, a individual or an entity, foreign or domestic, uh, that he is therefore then beholden to, uh, his financial interests, um, as has been the case ever since we've had to experience Donald Trump, would be foremost in his mind above the national interest. He consistently puts his personal interests, his political interests, his financial interests ahead of the interests of the American people. So as Michael Cohen said, if there were a situation where he had to take money uh, from a foreign entity um, of a quantity as large as we're talking here, uh, more than half uh, a billion dollars, that really would be of grave concern. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's you know one of the many ways, uh, Jonathan, that, that we really need to be careful and concerned about uh, Donald Trump as a, a threat to our national security. Right. And you have several national security concerns about Trump, which are all interrelated. Which is the which is the foundational concern? His cozying up to autocrats like Orban and Putin or his openly saying to Putin about NATO, do whatever the hell you want if nations don't pay more for their defense? Well, they're linked, and they're both of paramount concern. Uh, the fact that Donald Trump has said very recently that as far as he's concerned, Putin can do what the hell he wants to NATO uh, and attack NATO countries, uh, and, and that gives him no concern, is fundamentally uh, contrary to our national security interests. NATO... It's the most effective uh, alliance in, in global history. Uh, one billion people on both sides of the Atlantic uh, fall under its security umbrella. Uh, the only time that NATO has invoked Article 5, the collective defense provision, was when we were attacked on 9-11. So we are directly tied up in the security of NATO and, and our partners there. And when Donald Trump says, he, you know, Vladimir Putin, his dictator friend, can have at NATO and he doesn't care, we all need to be very, very concerned. Does, Ambassador, does the fight over funding for Ukraine and Trump's influence on Capitol Hill feed into your concern? Absolutely. Absolutely. The fact that Ukraine, which has bravely and boldly fought for over two years, holding off a completely unprovoked aggression uh, by, uh, by Russia, um, and is waiting, waiting, waiting desperately for the United States to join with our European partners and provide the military and financial support that Ukraine so badly needs, it is an outrage. Uh, we should be supporting Ukraine. We're not doing the fighting. Europeans are not doing the fighting. Ukrainians are doing the fighting. And this is a battle uh, for the future of Europe and for the future of democracy. Vladimir Putin has been perfectly clear uh, when, uh, if he were able to succeed in Ukraine, uh, if that were the case, his intent is to keep rolling uh, into NATO countries and other parts of Europe. Uh, this is not his first foray uh, into other sovereign countries. He did it in Georgia. He did it uh, in Crimea. And now he is doing it in the rest of Ukraine. And he uh, has promised to, to, to take that effort further if we let him do so. So Donald mm -hmm. Trump's urging of the Republicans in Congress to block Ukraine aid is a direct favor to Vladimir Putin, and it underscores why we need to be so concerned about uh, Trump potentially returning to the White House. Yeah, the Baltic states and Poland are especially concerned about what happens in Ukraine. Ambassador, in your last interview as national security advisor under President Obama, I asked you what would be the number one thing your successor would have to worry about. And you told me what makes you think there's only one. What do you think the danger is facing the United States today that, that would be exacerbated by a second Trump presidency? Well, we've talked about uh, Europe, Ukraine, uh, the future of NATO, and therefore our national security. I think we also need to be very concerned about 
Putin's relationship uh, with China. He's, as you said in your opening, has a history of accepting uh, money from a, the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, he has delivered very uh, ambiguous signals to China. We need to worry about the security of Taiwan in that event uh, and our allies throughout Asia. Trump's message is very clear. He doesn't believe in alliances. He doesn't believe in these bedrock relationships, which have been the foundation of our uh, national security and of global security. He wants to pull the underpinnings out of our alliances in Europe, our alliances in Asia. And that is a gift to, to two people uh, on the planet, Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin. Mm -hmm. And given everything um, that we've been talking about, Ambassador, the last question for you. Once Donald Trump is the official Republican presidential nominee at their convention in July, he will get access to classified intelligence briefings while he's, uh, while he's awaiting trial in federal court on multiple, multiple felony charges for violating the Espionage Act for his handling or mishandling of classified material. Should he be able to get those classified briefings while he's awaiting, it's not even trial, while he's, uh, you know, stands indicted on, espion on, on violations of the Espionage Act? Well, uh, this is a very serious question, and the intelligence community uh, and the leadership of that will, will need to take uh, careful stock. Um, th this is an unprecedented situation. Never have mm -hmm. we had a presidential nominee, much less a former president of the United States, indicted for the mishandling of classified information and efforts to obstruct and, and cover up that mishandling. Um, it, it's extremely serious, and uh, therefore, one needs to be uh, very careful about uh, what information is in his hands uh, unless and until he's president of the United States, uh, an outcome that I'm confident we will not experience. But in the meantime, uh, we will uh, have the question of whether he would get a handful of, of classified briefings, as has traditionally been the case, uh, for the nominee of uh, the opposing party or the party out of office, uh, or in the case of no incumbent, uh, both uh, nominees. But these are not daily briefings like he mm. would receive as a president of the United States or even as president-elect. These would be, you know, one or two or three uh, briefings on subjects that the uh, intelligence community would be able to tailor uh, as they saw appropriate. Yeah.